here's the SSIS one. All right, so a basic at just a couple of packages here. Uh, the first thing I have is a master package, and the master package, uh, its job is just to run the uh, the dimensions and the fact loads here. Yes, they do get worse. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> All right, uh, and we take a look at our server loads here. So here's dim server, and basically what I'm doing here is the first thing I'm doing is I'm inserting an unknown row. So if I pull back something that's uh, missing, I have some fact data like a server name, it's changed or some things like that that are missing, I can actually uh, not have an error message during my load time. If you want to know more about that, I have a, a, a blog on BIDN that talks about loading unknown rows into a, uh, into a data warehouse. So you can go to BIDN and just search for unknown uh, rows and you'll see that in there. And then reading a server list. Now, the way I did this was I created a table just called server list, and just had a list of my servers on there. And the reason I did that was uh, what I could have done is I could have uh, gone out and queried uh, my network and tried to find all my servers and pulled them in. But I, I thought about it and I said, you know, you're probably not going to want to run this on every single server in your system. For example, you may have dev development servers, QA servers, uh, and you, you don't want to pull. Uh, stats for every single one of those. The, the production ones are probably the most important ones. And so I decided to create a server list here. It's basically just a table that holds a list of all my servers. I query that table, pulls back that list of servers, and now I go back and look for, uh, for the data on each one of those servers. So if we go back here, and we look, my next item here is for each server. So basically I pulled back this server list here using the execute SQL command. I saved that into an object variable called object server list. And my next item here is a for each loop. And that for each loop, if we go to the collection here, you'll see I'm using for each ADO numerator. And I'm able to select that object variable. And I'm going to use the rows in that first table, which I'm only pulling about one table. So that's all I need. So basically, I'm able to loop through for every server that I have in that table now. This makes it really easy to maintain. So if you get a new server, you set that up, and you decide you want to maintain it, great. Just add that list. Uh, add that server name to the server list table, and that's it. It's, it immediately starts getting monitored with your system that you have set up here. As it loops through that, it's going to go into the Git server info section here. And if we go into Git version, my source here, you'll see that it's this is running a, uh, a select top one here just from that server, getting things like the CPU count, the hyperthread ratio, uh, just information about that server itself. And here's the DMO it's using here, the DMOS sys info there. And yes, I'm going to upload this, all these uh, queries and all of these uh, packages, the cube, everything will be available on my blog when we get done today. I'll upload those for you uh, to MikeDavisSQL.com. So this basically pulls back some data from my server here. And if we run a little preview here, you'll see what, it's, what it pulls back. So my server name there, uh, the logical CPUs, how many CPUs I have, threads, the physical CPUs that are on there. So you can see it's uh, one CPU and there's four logical there. So I've got uh, four cores there. And then my, the amount of memory on the machine also. So I've got eight uh, gigs of RAM there. So that's just the information about the server. And we load that up into our uh, server table. Now down here I'm doing a, a type one load here. I'm looking to see if that server name already exists on my uh, server dimension table. If it does, I'm just updating it. Uh, so if the number of cores have changed or if we've added more memory, it'll just update it and show the new information. And if it's, if it's a new row, it just goes and inserts that new row for me here. So that goes on my dim server table. And if we go over to our data warehouse here, I have a data warehouse called uh, SQL Monitoring DW here. And if we go to dim server, and just do a select from that, you'll see my server there. So there's my server name and there's the information about my servers. Now you notice everything on here kind of matches uh, and that's because this uh, local host, the dot, and then the actual server name itself, those are actually uh, all the same server. Uh, I didn't have multiple servers to run this on here uh, in, my, in our location, so I just went ahead and ran on one server. But I put three different server names in there uh, so it, uh, you can see an example of the way it looks. But it is the same server just over and over again there. This is not something you'd normally do. You, you wouldn't put localhost and, and dot in there. You would only put the actual server names in here. So I did this just for example. All right, so that's how we get the server information. That's the first thing we want to do. And then the next item here is dim databases. So our dim database loads, same thing. We're inserting an unknown row here. And we're reading that server list table again, pulling that in, loading it into an object variable once again. 
we do a for each loop for each server inside of that object variable that we just created. And then we go to get database info. Now I've got two things going on here. I've got my dim database and then my database source. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing a merge join to load up my uh, my rows here. So I want to find any differences and the merge join allows me to do that because I've got a conditional split here. I can compare uh, each item now once I've merged them. And this is a very quick way to do this. So if you have thousands of databases or even you know, millions of databases out on, across thousands of servers, uh, this is a very fast way to load these. Uh, doing the lookups can be quite slow, so this is a much uh, better performance method for loading uh, lots and lots of rows. So if we go here and look at database source, there's my source right there. Now it says uh, select local host and uh, server name there, but uh, this is actually a variable, as you can see, that's being used. So the variable is going to change based on what server I'm looking at at the time. And you see that it's pulling from our sys master files right there and our sys databases. So it's pulling back the data from those. We preview that. I don't think we can preview it. Yeah, we sure can. There we go. There's a the physical name and the collation and the databases that are inside of there. It's the basic information about my databases here. And this is loaded up into my uh, table called DIM databases. So I can slice by database name or by the server name if I wanted to inside of that. Over here on the DIM database, what I'm doing here is I'm just basically selecting from DIM database here. And then I use the merge join here to join those together based on the database name and the server name. And that gives me a combination of the old items that you can see here and the existing ones. So my old ones are my existing ones and my uh, database name will be my new one coming in. And then my conditional split down here just basically does a check to see if the database name is different than the, the new name that exists there. If anything has changed with it, uh, then we need to update that. So we got two rows here. We have update needed, or we have new, or no update needed at all. So if any updates are needed, then it goes down here and writes to our database. If there's no updates, then it just goes ahead and loads it because it's a new row in our database. All right, so that's loading up our DIM server and our DIM database. Now there is uh, a few more dimensions that I have inside of my warehouse here. Let me go back over and take a look at this. And these basically I just kind of hard coded in here. And after after thinking about it, I, I probably could have combined these into a single dimension uh, called a junk dimension. But I broke them up for you to make it a little easier to understand. So uh, dim log reuse weight. If I uh, select top thousand from that, you see I just went ahead and I I hard coded in some values in here. And just because I, I, these values don't usually change, these are just values that are available inside a SQL Server. There's only a couple items available. Uh, not really. I don't need to really query what types of these there are. When a new version of SQL Server comes out, these might change, and so I may need to go in and enter the new information, but I don't want to query my database every single time I load it uh, looking for these when I know they're not going to change unless I upgrade to a new version of SQL Server.